Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Designer boas are living works of art in which breeders combine multiple morph genes to create animals with a whole range of different colors and patterns. When combining genes together in the same animal, some combinations definitely go better than others. Today I want to show you some of the more common two gene morph combos that are available today as well as show you some of my favorite two gene morph animals from my collection. If you find this video helpful or you just like to look at beautiful snakes, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming boa videos. When breeding two different morph genes into a single animal, some combos work a lot better than others. So in some cases, one of the genes just kind of overwhelms the other one and you really only see the effect of the one gene or in other cases they just don't really look good together you know that the gene may look better by itself as a single gene animal than combining it together with some other gene but there are some cases where the two different morph genes really complement each other well such as if one gene affects the pattern and the other gene affects primarily the color and this is an example of a two gene combo that I think works really well together. This is called a hypo IMG boa or hypomelanistic increasing melanin gene boa. And it's kind of a paradox because it's got two different mutant genes. One actually decreases the amount of melanin pigment. The other one increases the amount of melanin dark pigment. But the effect is you have a boa that has a greatly increased amount of contrast. You can see that this animal is starting to show all of the increased black pigment. This is actually a one-year-old animal. The IMG boas will get darker and darker as they shed. And as adults, some of them are almost pure jet black. So this particular animal, you can see also has a lot of lighter areas um, due to the hypogene. And the hypogene increases the color saturation uh, while the IMG combo with it greatly increases the contrast. Another thing I like about this Hypo IMG is they have really, really cool head markings. They have really, really light, bright eyes and the contrast between the light, bright eyes and the dark head markings is just really, really cool. They also have a lot of these head markings, these background splotches and freckles and all kinds of really cool markings. So I like the IMG a lot, as I said before, and in combination with the Hypogene, it's a really cool effect. This particular animal is also het for call albino. So I can breed this one to a call albino male and potentially get some IMG sun glow boas, which will be really cool. Uh, this one, although, is only about a year old, so this female is probably at least around three or four years away from breeding. But something cool to look forward to. But the IMG is a good gene to combine with a lot of other genes and hypo IMG go really well together. The hypo or hypomelanistic gene is often combined in combo boas. And this is another two gene hypo combo morph. This is a hypo moron boa. And so looking at this animal, you can see the impact of the hypo gene. So this animal has a greatly reduced amount of the dark pigment, as well as increased color saturation and increased contrast, and then some changes to the pattern. So looking at the saddles, you can see the hypo causes the saddles to be this bow tie shape. And it also causes, in some cases, some aberrancies to the saddles. It can even cause uh, some minor striping. So the other gene in this animal is the Moran gene. And this, as you probably know, Moran is one of my favorite genes and you don't see it very much, but I think it's a really cool gene. And the Moran is a uh, incomplete dominant form of the pastel. So most pastel boas, the pastel is caused by multiple genes that lead to this colorful phenotype. But with Moran, basically you have just the one gene that leads to the pastel coloration. So looking at this animal, you can see uh, she has a lot of this beautiful pink and orange and all different shades of uh, color on her sides. And just her, the colors of her, the brown and yellows is really intense and just a really beautiful looking animal. 
so Hypo and Moran go well together. Another great thing about this animal is she's 50% possible hat for call albino. So uh, my plan is to breed her to my albino male, and if she's hat, I should be able to generate some Moran sun glows. And the Moran gene will probably really enhance the color of the sun glow boas. And one thing that I'm really hopeful about is this animal has some really particular looking eyes. And so looking at her eyes, they have this really bright, light, silvery color to them. And this is actually thought to be a marker for heterozygosity for the cow albino genes. This is really light, bright eyes. I'm really looking forward to pairing her up in a couple years with my cow albino male. And hopefully she'll prove out and I'll be able to generate some Moran sun glows and Moran albinos. In addition to the hypo gene, another gene that's commonly combined in morphs is the jungle gene. And the jungle gene can be a bit confusing for some people because sometimes the effects can be really subtle and jungle boas can be really variable. In fact, I did a video entitled The Enigmatic Jungle Boa, so you may want to check that one out for more information. But this is a combo of the jungle uh, gene with another one of my favorites, which you may have guessed, the Moran gene. This is a jungle Moran. And so looking at this animal, you can see the impacts of both genes. The jungle cleans up the pattern and leads to this really clean dorsal you know, surface for the back of this animal has very few markings. And it leads to uh, differences in the shape of the saddle. The saddles have this kind of rounded appearance, as well as some striping. You can see her tail is, has a stripe. And just overall greater color saturation and contrast. The Moran, as I mentioned, is a incomplete dominant form of pastel. So the animal has beautiful pastel colors that are greatly enhanced by the jungle gene. And the jungle uh, Moran is one of my favorite two gene boas. I think these two genes just go really well together. And this is a beautiful looking female, one of my favorites in the collection. I like the jungle Moran morph so much, I was able to get this second animal, and this is a male. And looking at this guy, you can see a little bit of the variability compared to my female. So this guy is unfortunately going into shed, so his colors aren't quite as bright as normal. But overall, he's got a slightly lighter background color. His dorsal surface is even cleaner than with my female. And he has kind of more of the jungly look. You can see he's got some striping on his neck and he's got these saddles that have this little white dot in the center, as well as you can see how clean his tail markings are. The jungle gene can cause the tail markings to be really well defined. And looking at some of his saddles, they have this really cool geometric shape. So I'm really looking forward to pairing this male Moran jungle up with my female Moran jungle. And this isn't gonna happen in the upcoming breeding season, but possibly in the fall of 2021, hopefully for some babies in 2022. And with this particular pairing, it could lead to super Morans as well as super jungles and possibly even a super Moran super jungle. So that should be a really interesting animal to say the least if I'm successful in producing that combo. There are a number of very common two gene combo morph boas that I don't have examples of to show you. So I thought I'd head over to morphmarket.com, which is a great place to do research on morphs of boas and other reptiles. So from the main page, you wanna click on boa constrictors, and then you'll see a list of all of the different genes that are on Morph Market, and you can see animals for sale, animals that have been sold, as well as all. So we want to select all. And then in addition to single gene animals, you can go to trait combos and select all. And so this will show you some of the multiple gene combo boas. And so the first that I want to discuss is called the snow. And the snow is a perfect example of two separate genes that work better in combination. And it's a combination of both an albino as well as an anerythristic. And so as you probably know, the albino takes away 
the dark melanin pigments is the amelanistic and the anorithristic removes the yellows and oranges and reds so what you have is a boa that's very white looking so it's not quite a pure white boa you can see some uh, residual pattern is a little bit darker and these animals in addition when they grow up they'll often get kind of more of a yellowish color although some lines do retain more of a whitish color and then some of them do have a little bit of you know like a dark uh, speckling to them but overall it's a very white looking boa and it's called the snow so in addition to using the call albino gene to make a snow boa there's other types of snows you can use sharp the sharp albino gene which is a similar looking uh, boa as the call snow and then you can use the different t positive albinos of course the most famous is the vpi and so the vpi snow is a combination of the vpi t positive albino as well as the uh, anorithristic gene and incidentally when you look up the trait combos there's lots of examples that have other genes like jungle here here's a motley but we just want to see a straight t positive snow and here's an example oh, i'm sorry this is a uh, aztec so this one has the aztec gene in addition to the snow uh, here's a vpi snow and so this shows you what the vpi snow looks like so you can see that it's a uh, not quite as clean of a white as with the call because the vpi does have some of the dark pigment but it's got a very beautiful look to it you can see more of the background dark melanin pigment but overall a very reduced amount of melanin and a really cool looking boa the vpi snow another very common two gene combo morph is called a sun glow and the sun glow is a combination of the amelanistic or albino gene in combination with the hypogene and so here's an example of the sun glow and as you may know some of the issues with the albino is that over time the colors tend to fade and they get this kind of washed out yellowish look over time but when you combine the uh, amelanistic or albino with the hypo it greatly increases the color saturation and contrast as well as the retention of color so in this case, this is called a call sun glow. It's the call albino gene in combination with the hypo. But then there's also possibilities of sun glows with the other types of albinos, uh, such as the sharp albino and the different types of T positive albino like VPI. So let's uh, check out a VPI sun glow. You can see a lot of these are examples of not just straight uh, sun glows, but they have other genes. But here's one. This is a VPI sun glow, 50% het anery. And you can see that the look of the VPI sun glow is a little bit different. The colors tend to be a little bit darker. And you know the background color also tends to be a little bit darker because of the T positive. But the hypogene definitely works well with the different types of albino or amelanistic genes to create a sun glow boa. Similar to the sun glow boa, but with anery instead of a melanistic, is the ghost boa. So this is a combination of the anorithristic gene with the hypogene. And so here's an example of just a ghost. And you can see that it's got the background pattern of the hypo with the bow tie saddles, um, as well as the lack of any red pigment. Uh, and the hypo kind of gives it kind of a cleaner look overall. So this is an example of a ghost. Sometimes the ghosts have kind of more of a brownish color to the background color. Uh, the best examples have a really nice silvery looking color. Uh, so here's, here's an example. This one is a little more silvery. And you know, this is, has a pastel background which enhances this silvery color. But often there's some variation in ghost boas with you know, some having more of a nice silvery color than others so if you shop around you want you can see the multiple different types of ghost boa and you want to find one that uh, looks like the look you want it here's one that looks has kind of a lighter appearance uh, but you know lots of ghosts to choose from just like the sun glow it's a pretty common morph to find here on morph market 
One final combo morph that you see very frequently is called the hypo jungle. And just like the name suggests, this animal has both the hypomelanistic gene and the jungle gene. And these two genes work together really well. The, uh, you can see there's an increased amount of color saturation, a cleaner background pattern, the aberrancies and reduced saddles from both the jungle and the hypo gene, and overall just a cleaner look. The hypo jungles are pretty common and you can get them usually very inexpensively, often in the two to three hundred dollar range. And there's a lot of variation in them, so be sure to look around and find one that you really like. Here's another example. So this one, you can see the saddles are a little bit thinner than the first one we looked at. And this one is also hat for call and possible hat for sterling. And often, of course, hypo and jungle get combined with lots of other genes. So you can often find animals which are hat available, like this is one is hat for albino, the call albino, and possibly hat for anorthristic. Uh, so getting a hypo jungle is a good way to get into a morph project if you're on a limited budget. So I hope this video was helpful and gave you some appreciation of some of the different two gene morph combo boas that are available. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to write them below or to reach out to me. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy your boas.